an unwilling participant in a Uyghur experience in the cemetery. This story comes from a time when I was on active duty. It was a time when my own board would not move anymore for me, and my third eye was like candy. I still was trying to be careful, because people were so narrow-minded and stupid that I was always on the defense. There was one person that understood, and he was the one I hung around with when we were in port and I was not on duty. This night was going to be different. This night was going to be unique. However, I did not see what was coming. After we were done with the daily work day, I was not on duty and neither was my partner in crime, so to speak. I showered, and then I got dressed, because I thought we were going to go to a nightclub, meet girls, dance, you know normal things. Nope, that was not going to happen tonight. I got dressed, and grabbed my wallet, and keys to my locker on the ship and walked up the stairs to the mess deck. When I got there, my friend was holding a gothic-looking Uyghur, I said. And what, pray tell, are we doing with that? He looked at me, and said, We are going to the cemetery, and use this. I looked at him, and said, it is obvious you are taking some unique drugs that leave you in a unicorn euphoria state, and you're not sharing them. Now you might say I had a choice, but consider this. When you are on a ship, in the middle of the ocean you work with these people. You live with these people. Most get on your nerves and you cannot get away from them. So my choices were kinda limited. Now you would think I had a bad feeling, or something. Nope, I was disappointed we were going to spend an off night in a cemetery with a bunch of tombstones that could not even talk about things. No dancing. No fun. Just me, my friend and an old gothic-looking Uyghur, which I did not know if it would work with me there. Oh, the fun. Oh, the adventure. Oh, heck, what were we thinking anyway? Were we even thinking? After 40 minutes of walking at night down some dirt roads, grassy areas, and passing places that look like they came right out of a Stephen King novel we arrived at the cemetery. Looked cozy. Just the place I would love to retire. We sat down as soon as we found an open spot, and we began to use it. Surprisingly it moved for me. My friend asked the questions. Would you like to speak with us? Why yes, the oracle moved to. My friend then asked. What is your name? The board spelled out. M-A-R-R-Y Mary R-M-S-E-Y Ramsey. What year did you die? My friend asked. The oracle glided across the board. Quite fast now. 1929, then my friend asked, what would you like us to do? The oracle whisked very fast across the board, and spelled out give flowers to my daughter please. I looked at my friend, and said, great not only are we sitting in a cemetery, but now we have a job assignment by a thing in the board to buy flowers, spend our money, and find her daughter, which by the way, could be married, 
and her husband punches us out. I looked up, and my friend's eyes were wide, and he was not saying a word. I said, Did you hear me? No answer, what is your malfunction here? My friend could only point behind me. I looked. There was no one there. But as I looked at the tombstone it read. Mark Ramsey Beloved Mother. 1855-1929. At this I simply got up, put the board in his hand with the oracle. And we headed back to the ship. I was not afraid. I was kind of relieved. Heck, what are the chances that in 1990 her daughter would be alive anyway? If she was, what do you think she would do if we did find her? Bought her flowers, and then told her we had a conversation with her mother. No, I think this one is closed. I decided to just go back and watch television. As the universe expands, so must our minds.